All right, YouTube, today you got boys talking ball. Casey's still out on maternity leave, so I brought Big Ev in here because he's the most pregnant-looking person we got. I'm sorry that was wrong. Like, subscribe, enjoy boys talking ball. Hello, welcome to Unnecessary Reference Barstool's College Football Podcast brought to you by the good people at High Noon Hard Seltzer. Yes, High Noon, you know it, you love it. It is real juice, real vodka made for real people like you and me. I'm looking at the uh, tropical pack, but if you go get the – tailgate pack you can get the pear and the cranberry you'll get the pool pack the kiwi and the guava this is two watermelon two mango two pass fruit two pineapple they also have big cans of peach and pineapple lemon they have, they have the best flavors in the world peach and uh, grapefruit and passion fruit and lemon and lime and was, watermelon and drink, grapefruit i was drinking some lemon this weekend it's a beautiful beautiful tasting drink really really yes it's just it's a just, full-bodied lemon yes it's just you you crack that thing open and you enjoy every sip that you have, and I think lemon's my favorite flavor right now, but the thing is, I don't really have a least favorite so, flavor. I'm a peach guy, but I can go seven or eight deep with, yeah, me uh, either. with good flavors. What's your favorite flavor of high noon? Pineapple. Okay. Pineapple. What's the pineapple? Ooh, loves the pineapple. Least, like, pineapple. It hits your lips. It's, yeah. It's, there it is. All their flavors are delicious. Uh, check out High Noon on Drizzly or your local gr grocery store, liquor store, wherever you get things that you enjoy. I bet they got High Noon. And any bar, I guarantee you they got High Noon. Check it out. Enjoy it. High Noon. All right. This episode, if we had titles, if we were like The Office and one is the Dundees and the next one is the job, you know, if we had episode yep. titles, this one would be Boys Talking Ball. We love the Boys Talking Ball. Yeah. I got boys here. And we're just going to talk ball. That's all we're going to do. We don't need to make it complicated. We're not going to get fancy. We're not gonna, no two minutes real. Nothing but ball talking here. We love talking ball. You like ball talking? I do. I like the. I would like to just say one thing to the YouTube audience. I apologize for making the third of this podcast sniffly uglier than it probably usually is. No, no, but no. But they're no, going to have to just deal with that for this episode. They're going to have the, to. Deal oh, with that it. is true because they have no choice. I'm there's sitting two here women and, yeah. usually, and then went. No, it's just guys. And it's also it's it's not on you. It's on Casey for getting pregnant. That's yeah, her one. fault. Oh, that's yep. our fault. And then Katie couldn't be here either, so it's on them. So yep. it's not on us. We're just here to fill the seats. Now, I will say that me and Jack are nice guys. You know why? Because this chair makes whoever sits in it look bad. No, I've, and you sitting I've, in that chair would have been hilarious. I have avoided that chair at all costs. <laughs> yes, this is I moved multiple, from that multiple podcast <laughs> settings. Oh. I'm uh, I moved from that chair to this chair because this chair is just it's up. Whoever designed who this what? was a chair for like a BuzzFeed podcast studio. <laughs> yes. Like this is not for Barstool Sports. Let me tell you this, and God bless whoever designed the studio and whoever designed all this stuff. Uh, you know the background, whatever. But if you're getting two of these chairs, why not just get three? I don't. Why, yeah. Why not just why, why do we have two of these and one of these? I I don't know. Uh, uh yeah, it feels like we should all have the same chair. This chair is just, I feel like I'm in a BuzzFeed studio. It just doesn't feel right. And then, yeah, you know, we dainty. got some husky guys at Barstool. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we, we got some husky guys and this chair is just, it doesn't do anybody any favors. Well, we're the, we're the boys. But this is the boys talking ball. So who cares about the chairs? Yeah. Chairs ain't, chairs don't matter. Uh, shout out to Casey Smith. We're in week four, I believe of, uh, yeah. Yeah. Three yeah, interviews. yeah. Yeah. We have week four, and then uh, I already have an interview lined up for uh, next week. Which should be a great one. Should be a great one. Um, fuck, I'll just tell you. It's Danny Cannell. Yes. Danny Cannell. Mm. Coming Danny on K. So we've had Josh Pate. We've had Peter Burns of the SEC Network. And we've had uh, we had one. Who was the first one? Jason Brown. Jason Brown, yes, of Independence Community College. I love Jason Brown. Uh, we actually had an interview slated today, and, and we, we did it, and uh, – yeah, no, it's not coming out. Didn't go well. No, didn't go well. So we'll just move on. We'll move on past that one very, very quickly uh, because we got Big Evan here, and as far as ball knowers in the building, he is at the top of the list. Thank you, Ray. Much better, much better guest, let's just say. Yeah. It wouldn't be hard to be a better guest than the guy we had earlier, but <laughs> this is a significant upgrade. The less we say about it, the better as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, yeah, so we got Big Ev here to talk ball and everything. Before we get – so what I've decided to do – I've written down 21 questions. I love it. 21 college football questions. Like the 50 Cent song. That prov yes, it's exactly. I was singing it in my mind when I was writing it down. Uh, so 21 questions, um, and this is just a stoke discussion about college football. Nobody writes better questions than you, and I'm not saying that in like a – you, you could do it on the – you did that in like ten minutes. I did, I did. I'm a good, I'm a decent question writer. I, I can get. You got a great uh, creative mind. I don't have that, but I, I have a, I have a let's get through this mind. How about that? A lot of oh. complimenting on this show. 
Well, I'm not after used, what I'm happened used, earlier, you got to understand what me and Jack are coming from. <laughs> <laughs> we're just happy we made it out. <laughs> we're just Fair happy enough. to be. We're like brothers now. <laughs> we've seen some shit, man. You just, you just did some stuff together. <laughs> yeah. yeah we're, we're if you've been through what we've been through, you understand. Okay. All right, fair enough. Uh, uh, um, anyway, I'm going to go. Look at this. I'm going to go blind. Can we not close out at all? Is it? It's, it's on the outside. There's no really to close out. What an odd set of windows. We have a big window, and then we have the shade. This happens to be a little crack. And then another window. Yeah, uh, they put in this. Out, it's, out, it's the tarp outside. You can't really get to it. So why there's yeah, but what two about our shade here? Is because originally when we moved into this pod or this office, we built our podcast studios directly on Seventh Avenue, which was a hell of a decision from yeah. uh, whoever decided to do that. Yeah, why didn't we do it on the other side? Uh, you know, the best <laughs> studio in this office is, without a doubt, KFC Radio because their studio is yeah. built. Nowhere near anything. Well, I think Brianna's got a good one upstairs. Yeah. Hers is interior, too. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, we are. We could spit on 7th Avenue from here. I don't know why we would do that. But anyway, college football, we're going to talk about it. Before we get into my questions, I did have one topic I wanted to talk about. Last week, the, the subject of SEC pods was hot in the streets. You had Ross Dellinger, Mississippi State man. Ross Dellinger of SI. Is he still with SI? Uh, yes, he is. He reported the likely pods, which means who you would play every year. Every team's going to be assigned three teams to play, and yada, yada, yada. With Oklahoma and Texas included. Yeah, and Alabama, the, their rumored pod was Auburn, Tennessee, and LSU. Now, if you go by the very most recent history, that that's a pretty tough pod, yeah. Well, they already play those three teams every year. Correct. Uh, but Nick Saban complained nick saban was basically came out and said oh why poor us look at look at who we gotta play look at this i can't believe this yeah yada 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 i have had enough of nick saban complaining about little shit to last me for the rest of my life this man has built a monster this man has built the best program in the history of college football over the last 15 years why does he have to bitch about every little thing that happens what right does he have to bitch about anything college football is made to suck alabama's dick why has he got a bitch well he is the don it's you know, fine it's like it's just if you know if he he built how much value has he brought the sec Hundreds of millions Hundreds of dollars. Hundreds of millions of dollars. So yeah. I would understand why he would be like, hey, this isn't fair. He's but to complain about a team, Tennessee, that's beaten him one time in 20 years? But then you think of it for the perspective of you already play them every year. Already play LSU and Auburn every year. You already play, yeah, all, already play they, all three of these teams play every all year. Three of those yeah, this is every nothing year. new. Yeah. Uh, I, I got it. What do you think, Big I mean, I think for him, his perspective was just the squeak wheel gets the oil. Yeah. He's saving, so he's like, I'm going to throw my shot out there, and maybe if if it has any impact on it whatsoever, then he's just mad he's me. not playing but, you guys. Was he? Was he? The, I'm, I'm going to go blind. Was he this? <laughs> was he this bitchy five or six years ago? When I'm he was trying to titles? think because uh, you remember uh, you know, six months ago or what, however long the title game was or the the playoff was four months ago. Uh, he was going on TV begging to get put in the playoff when he didn't deserve it he at all. He did change. He, he has been more needy over the last year than he's ever been. I will say he did change the rules back in like 2011 about the spread offense. Remember that? Yeah. He was a big, and I think that's fair that if the offense gets to do a substitution, yeah. you get to do a substitution. But he was a big proponent of that. But what's crazy is him complaining about that didn't accomplish as much as him just go embracing the offense and bringing in big time quarterbacks Hunter, and going to spread. You're not wrong. Once about he that. decided to change his offense, he started winning titles again. Like he had the the boring titles early, and then he had the exciting titles later where he was actually, he could actually score. Yeah. No, you're right. He, but has he gained that right to complain? I would say uh, out of everybody in college football, I w he probably has the most wisdom and most earned respect to talk from without question i mean i, I say i just think he, he just knows he can get away with it he's yeah. like fuck it if i can if i can throw a couple things out there throw shit at the wall maybe one or two pieces will stick yeah now mississippi state's rumor pod would be they would be getting every year ole miss kentucky texas a&m sold done I, give it to I, me i was i was gonna sign me up the, i think that's no, what we should do no lsu no bama no georgia <laughs> give, give, sounds give, good give me that right now I get Ole Miss, a team that's my equal, basically. 
I get uh, Kentucky, a team that's my equal, basically, and I get the most disappointing team in the conference on a yearly basis, Texas A&M. Yeah. I would, I would take that seven days a week, twice on Sundays. So that's eight days a week. I Noah, I'm, I'm going to die. <coughs> Noah, will you stand there the whole time and hold your hand up? Don't, don't do that to Noah. He's good people. Don't <laughs> He's do great. There you see go. That, no, no, just stand there see, the whole time. I that's why I don't appreciate it because he's nice enough. He will do it. <laughs> Sit down. All right, just all right, shift over here. You uh, could move your chair a little bit. I don't, I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. If you're just listening to the podcast, you don't even know this is happening. Yeah, but it, it's affecting you. I'm not affected. I'm a, I'm a soldier. By the way, our grandfathers fought in wars. I'm sitting here on 7th Avenue in Manhattan complaining about just, a small sliver of light. Just looking at some of the other pods yeah. vanderbilt tennessee Auburn. and these are rumored pods by rumors the way. yeah but this is from ross dellinger from speaking to league insiders this is our best educated guess yeah lsu Ole miss texas a&m alabama yep oklahoma texas missouri florida okay you're you're the way you're saying it's confusing so first of all sorry you're right nope, nope. lsu's rumored pod is what Ole miss a and m yep alabama Oklahoma's rumor pod is what? Texas, Missouri, Florida. So that make what, Oklahoma and Florida? Why? I know. That's a weird one. I not to not to jump around. Are we are you guys do you like the pods? I I don't see what are, are, what, what is the benefit you, to pods? You got to understand over them making one like say just no no divisions in one big conference. I think the pods put you in a position that you can play everybody on a routine basis. You have three yeah. to play every year. And then the other six, you just you, you swap in every other year. So you're essentially just trying to build these like three rivalries, essentially. And well, then, that, yeah, but but you, you're going to play everybody in the conference a lot. Right now, the way the SEC is built, if Mississippi State plays Florida at home next year, and I have a child who's six months old, the next time mm. Florida comes to town, he'll be 14 years old. Yeah. Fair enough. Like yeah. they do not play. Okay. We we do not play each other. I, I guess I didn't realize it was that big a gap. We it don't is. play each other regularly at all. Yeah, and I think it's trying to build the SEC in a where there aren't those issues, and it keeps the rivalries intact. At least most of them, it appears. So, I I kind of like the pods. It seems like a good way to fix it, especially with uh, Oklahoma and Texas coming in. That being said. I and am, it, it, it stops you bitches from complaining. Because the pods opens up a path to a nine-game SEC schedule. And then you won't have anything to, to say, oh, y'all well, y'all only play eight uh, conference I games. Mean, I'm, I feel like I'm not usually one that says eight that. Eight conference but, games in the SEC is harder than nine enough. in the Big Ten. Uh, mm, mm. The only rivalry uh, I'm not the, the bo- seeing. The bottom loves to wave the flag at the top the, in the SEC. The... What does the bottom of the Big Ten do to to Michigan, Ohio State? They lay down, and let them pet their belly every year. They, they don't. They don't like suck our dicks the way that you guys do. Like Bama. Oh, Georgia. you're really worried about playing Rutgers every year, aren't you? No, no, no. It's not that I'm not worried about playing Rutgers. That they don't like. I don't think Rutgers. Like when it comes to playoff time, they're not like yeah, like Ohio State, Ohio State. Because why would but, they root for? Why would they root for a team that's never going to win? But I'm saying we do. We have one. We do win. So some of the rivalries I'm seeing that are not involved. Yeah. Florida and Tennessee are not in the same pods. That's interesting. Hmm. And then Arkansas and LSU are not. That's not as big of a rivalry. That's been a canned rivalry from the start. They've tried to force that into a rivalry, and it never really happened. Okay. Um, but Florida-Tennessee was probably probably the rivalry of the 90s in the SEC. I know. Uh, Spurrier, for sure. Spurrier and, um, you know, I always like to say there was no – can't spell Citrus Bowl without UT. And it was uh, – they would go back and forth. And the time that NC- Tennessee finally broke through and won the championship, their biggest win that year was they finally broke through and beat Florida. Tennessee uh, must love their pod. Vandy, Bama, South Carolina. That's not bad. You have to play Bama, but I, I, I think yeah, if you were if this were like a, a situation where everybody's lining up for food and there's fourteen food trucks, everybody in the SEC is going to that Vandy food truck. Yeah. Trying to get oh, trying yeah. to get something to eat. We're all trying it's sold out every day. They are getting a little better though. They're getting a little better. Last, last year, I feel like they made a nice jump. Actually, yeah, no, yeah. Actually, I was fine. thinking about win, them the other good, night. Of the season. If you, Wright if, was a good quarterback. But if you and I were to pick who would want to play in the SEC every year, you'd pick Vanderbilt. Well, yeah, yeah. I Maybe mean, yeah, Missouri. I mean, Maybe Missouri. Just tradi- traditionally, yeah. you would say Vanderbilt. Mizzou's but. kind of – they're an interesting – that's a team that, for Elijah Drinkwitz, this is a big year. But did you see their – I don't know how what came of it. This is two weeks ago now, so maybe it's old news. 
Um, their prospective starting quarterback is also a pitcher on their baseball team, and he came out of the game with elbow. Oh, my oh, God. No. Yeah, he came out of the game with, I don't know, whatever happened to him. I'm Horns surprised they name. still let them play. Especially if you're a quarterback, if, I, like I can see if, you playing third if, base. If you're gonna start. Yeah, if you're my starting quarterback, I'm not gonna let you pitch. Because was, I remember. Well, this is going on. Jameis was the closer for Florida State when he. Uh, yeah. But I think he only did his maybe his first year, and that was he yeah. stopped after that. There's Kyler that Murray, clip of him like hyping up them in the dugout, then they make a comeback. Kyler Murray played all uh, played at Oklahoma, right? Yes, I remember He's that. He's a position player though. He played third base, I think. Um, was he an outfielder? I thought he was an outfielder. I thought he was a third yeah. baseman. I thought he was an outfielder. He's kind of sh- he's small. he is short for a third baseman. You're right. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm I'm 100 percent wrong. They have another player that was also playing baseball at that time. There was a foot. I don't know. Oklahoma. There's been a lot of baseball There's football. Been a few, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, all right. Before I get to 21 questions, which will take us the rest of the show, and probably should take a while because there's 21 of them. Um, what's your favorite 50 Cent song? Uh, Many men. It's a good but song. I do love 21 Questions, though. Yeah, it's a good song. I think I'm a sucker for uh, I don't know what you heard about me. Just can't get it out of me. Yeah, I like that one. That one gets in my head. It's, it's, it's a th- classic. If that one gets in your head, it's there for days. That's a classic. That one in the club. Yeah. Uh, you know what else is classic? Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. Make mealtime easy with delicious recipes made with fresh, wholesome ingredients delivered to your door. No lines, no hassle. Just great tasting meals so you can whip up and enjoy in the comfort of your home. I'm going to keep telling you about HelloFresh as Big Ev checks the status of his bets. With the cost of groceries going up and up, now is the perfect time to get started with HelloFresh. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. HelloFresh has 40 weekly recipes to choose from for all meal occasions, lifestyles, and preferences. Take your pick from meals like soy glazed salmon with rice or mushroom and chive risotto. HelloFresh makes it easy to eat what you love. Customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, even adding protein to a veggie dish. Now you can even upgrade for organic chicken, organic ground beef on select meals. Go to HelloFresh.com, use code WALKER60. That's WALKER60 for 60% off plus free shipping. That's a crazy deal. I know. 60% HelloFresh has been giving our listeners crazy yeah. deals for, geez, yeah. two to three years now. But it keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, they are like, hey, guys, you didn't want it last deal? All right, we'll make it better for you. just going to give it to you. Uh, HelloFresh.com slash Walker60 for 60% off plus free shipping. That's code Walker60 at HelloFresh.com slash Walker60. Now, um, did you? It was shocking how bad it was. Uh, that was that was kind of your deal too. No, I know. I that's on me. I I said it from the get go. I'm sorry. I okay, said I said okay. I'm sorry. And I'm glad we cut out early. Yeah. I was expecting. I thought you were about to call it about five minutes in. Which I would have been completely fine. I with. almost was, but I said no, no, no. Don't be, don't be sensitive. Let's just see how it goes. It was just so. But bad. then it got to a point where. But it wasn't even funny. It wasn't like he told, he said that one bad thing, and then it was like, oh, yeah. we'll just cut that. The whole thing stunk. All right. Uh, so, Big Ev, are y'all ready for twenty-one questions? Yes. Big Ev, uh, Ohio State Homer Extraordinaire. But again, I don't think he's that big of a Homer to be well, honest. Well, he's a Homer. That's okay. I I I pride myself on my ability to put the hat on and off. But you're a supreme ball knower. I I I, I, give I you that. I'm allowed to. I think I'm able to like. I can put the hat on and like go go with the all in. I'm able to. Yeah. Be let me yeah. tell you. Let me let me tell you about Big Ab. Okay. This is real talk. All right. This is. Uh, I'm gonna be nice here. Um, there are people at this company and uh, elsewhere when their team is playing, they're locked in. They're everything. They're uh, fine. They're watching and and they put the jacket on. I love it. When their team's off, they're not paying as clo- much close attention. This guy, if it's eleven thirty on a Saturday night, he's watching San Jose State Hawaii. He's watching. Oh, yep. uh, he's watching Fresno State uh, Nevada. He's wa- he, If you ask him a quarterback from the MAC, he's going to tell you exactly no, no, what he thinks. No, no, he's, thinks a, at he's all a supreme times. ball knower. Yeah, he watches I mean, you, all of the college football. You, you, Mount, Mountain West football is the best. You, but you you'll watch uh, San Jose State and Fresno like you watch Ohio State Michigan. I mean, you, easily you, you you watch every everything. Of course, no, hundred percent. The Pac twelve. I love the late night. Yeah, you have to. You never turn it off. No, no. I, I I'm I'll, always up till three in the morning. I'll fade usually. on Saturday night. I, I I don't bet the like. I games. usually bet the Hawaii game for yeah. sure. Hawaii game is fascinating. It's always a new way to in watch fact, it every year. You can almost pick every year. He's going to have a favorite West Coast. Team. Remember a couple of years ago, you were a big Jake Hayner guy. He's. I, I was glad he was able to come back when he had that bad injury earlier in the year. I thought he was done. Um. All right. Twenty-one questions. Are y'all ready? Yes. Number one. 
These are all just encompassing around college football. If Ryan Day loses to Michigan again, is he in trouble regardless of what happens in the other 11 games? No. I think maybe. This is a this is a very heavy question. Yeah. Cuz I would have I I I, I, I mean, wonder I'd see uh, let me just I, I don't want to interject. But he lost to Michigan this year, but he kind of got – his butt got saved by making the playoff. If they hadn't made the playoff, that gave him new life. Um, but he would have faced some questions this offseason season. But where would you even – Ryan Day would get hired right away if he was let go. Probably, but Michigan almost fired Harbaugh because he couldn't beat Ohio State. Now, if the same thing flips and now he's lost three in a row to Michigan, um, and I don't know who's going to win that game. I, I know that – Michigan probably looks better on paper as of right now than Ohio State because I don't know who our Ohio State's quarterback is going to be. But we've like we didn't know C.J. Stroud was going to be amazing. Either. No, we didn't. Uh, we didn't. Yeah. Um, and I certainly didn't think halfway through the season J.J. McCarthy was any good, and then he shows up to Columbus and has a great game. So I would like to hear Big Ev's perspective here. I, I I mean, I mean it's tough to say depending on the other games. Obviously, I mean, I think it's see what starts to get hot for sure. Um. I don't know how much has been talked about public. I think the name that it, if there was ever to be a change made, like right now or in the near future, I think Hartline would be the guy. Hartline, yeah, I do. You think he's, he's far enough along to get an Ohio State coaching job, head coaching he, job? He's turned down a lot of big. I think he's turned down like like multiple like group of five head coaching jobs. I think he, he turned no, down he's, Cincinnati. He's turned down some like big like offense a lot of big offense coordinator jobs. That's a dangerous. And he's he's his his. If you look at what he's done with his group, they've been just elite after elite after elite. He's, an he's elite recruiter. He's personally, rec- he's personally recruited all these guys. So I think if there was and a change you, to be just made, just for everybody out there, you're talking about the receivers. All the receivers. Like you think the last like whatever group of receivers last like however many years? He's probably been there like six, eight years Smith now. And Jigba, all Harrison, of them, all of them. Alave too. Yeah. But even I'm talking even Julian to the, Fleming to like to even before that, like, even like the Benjamin Victors and the Austin Max and. Like KJ Hill, guys like the McLaurins, yeah, two guys like that, like uh, Curtis Samuels, like all those guys are like his guys, pretty much. Um, I don't. Uh, it's so hard to say because like he's won like every other game besides these games. But well, it sounds they're, like, like you know the, the answer, but you just don't want to say it. It's because I don't know. It's I like I his seat would be really hot. I don't know if they'd fire him like this season. Um, I agree. With, I mean, on him making the playoff and then us, even if there's more victories, no more victories. I mean. Going toe to toe with what clearly was the best team in the country. Yeah. I mean, firing I mean, that, a guy that, for that's, going that's, that eleven them. and one would be crazy. It's just there's the, the problem is there's nowhere really else to go unless they want to just throw it to Heartline, which yeah. I, think, I don't think they would do that like right away. Like well, that. the one is so important though to, to both those schools and like the other eleven. They they both eclipse the rest of the conference. The eleven is not as important as the one right now, which is wild. Yeah. No, it's true. No, he, you're absolutely right. It's it's very it's it's put my brain in the pretzel the last like the last two years. Because right. I, I do think Dave's a good coach, and I think he's done a good job. I think he, I think he's even shown what I love about him is in the when he has the month to prepare. I feel like he's prepared very well. Like I thought he prepared for Georgia. I agree well. with that. I think even the Cle- like the Clemson when we lost that we lost on. I thought we got fucked in the Scoobin score, and it was a miscommunication where Alave breaks off his route. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. lose that game. Like I thought he prepared very well for that game too. Where we've seen the flip side where where Michigan has prepared horribly for these games. Man, I saw the scoop and score on Twitter uh, yesterday, and it was like flashback to this call, maybe by bad sports refs or something. Yeah, I saw it, and I was like, I didn't remember it being that bad. He took like six <laughs> steps. <laughs> I mean, it was un- it, it's I, unbelievable. I, I lose sleep over it to this day. Like I, I'm not. I don't know. If he we, took four to five steps. I, 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 I'm not going to sit here and say we beat Joe Burrow in that next yeah. game, but I mean. We, we, we should have won that game for sure. We got fucked. Talking about the Ohio State-Clemson semifinal from 2019. Yes. Uh, and they were going to – Justin Fields was going to score on that drive too. Oh, and of course, prepared well. But then we go beat the shit out of Clemson the next year. Yeah, yeah, pretty, yeah. Like, Day's done well in those spots. All right. Question number two, as we bounce around the country, 21 questions. Is there a worthy second contender to give Georgia something to think about in the SEC East? I'm high – On Tennessee. I agree that Tennessee – I don't think Tennessee's going anywhere. I think the coach is good. I think his system is very good. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. If he succeeded with Hendon Hooker, a, a very average quarterback of Virginia Tech, if he took him and succeeded at a high level, why can't he do it with Joe Milton? I think the bet you have with Joe Milton slash Nico in the first year yeah. is good enough to say, okay – and they have to go to Rocky Top. 
Yeah, Georgia does. And maybe and that Georgia game is all of a sudden much more important now than the Alabama game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, um, and nobody's talking about it because Kirby has earned goodwill and he is. Well, earned, who's the, who's their quarterback? But we don't know who their quarterback and we and their offensive coordinator changed. Yep. Todd Munkin was fantastic, and now they got Mike Bobo, well, uh, which. Uh, and also Georgia, it's kind of it's bizarre because. Georgia's built themselves to Alabama, so now you have champagne problems, which are how do I replace these co- the offensive I thought, coordinators? I thought Georgia had some young hotshot quarterback. They, well, they do, got, they but we haven't seen them, right? Uh, well, fair and, enough. And but. they also Kirby hasn't done great with hotshot quarterbacks. That's fair. That's fair. They uh, brought JT Daniels Vandegrift. was, was That's fair. pretty trash there. Uh, yeah. They, uh, Jake Newman. Fromm. You know Jake Fromm Fields. got worse. He didn't know what to do with J- Justin Fields. Like he hasn't done great with great no, quarterbacks. It's, no, it's fair. Um, but so what, what's your definition of like worthy contender? Like, would you have considered Tennessee this year that? that? Uh, yes, yes. Yes. So, so I'll say Tennessee then. If you consider this year that, I think they can reach that level again next year. I, I'm talking about a 10 win team that makes Georgia sweat when they play them. Well, that's the only thing. I don't think they really sweat this year when they played them. Um, Not in the game per se, but I do think that that was, yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess you're right. South Carolina, I, I just, Shane Beamer has shown that he can. He can turn an average season into an above average season, but I don't know that I've seen. Am I going to believe that Spencer Rattler is going to go toe to toe with Georgia? Because when they play, were on the field together, it was not close. Yeah, I and would it's say at Georgia this year. I would say Kentucky is worth a look. I think a lot of people are going to bail on Kentucky. They were average last year, but they're improving so much at quarterback, going from Will Levis to Devin Leary, and they they got players. Yeah. So it's Kentu- interesting you say that, and he's about to be like. Number two pick. Well, and that is what and it you're is. You're absolutely correct. I, I can't help that, but as far as a college quarterback No, no, goes, no. I know, yeah, yeah. He, they are improving going from Will Levis to, to Devin Larry. Question number three. Now, let's, let's, let's get – y'all ready? Yep. True or false? Nick Saban has already won his final national championship false. at Alabama. False. You guys say false easily. Yes. He just had a peak team that didn't get close to winning the national high. He had a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. He had a top five pick on defense. He had uh, he had everything in line, and they lost two games. I disagree with them not being close. Both those games came down to absolute last second. For Alabama, I don't think they were close. I, like they, a two-loss Alabama team is a fucking disaster. Well, if a pass interference isn't called, then then – the LSU game was a little bit shaky. Okay, right. well, can I also have Texas A&M's two point conversion back? Yes, that's because, also true. Yeah, uh, can I have Texas not losing Quinn Ewers back? Because you're right, they they weren't that good. You guys think without question? You said no. He is. He's going to win another national. He's still title. recruiting at a top level. He just brought in the best class ever. Yeah, I feel like we say the best class ever a lot. Well, they're just getting better and better. And I kn- Texas A&M's already falling apart. <laughs> the best class ever last year. Yeah, it's done. Yes. What about you? I think you – I hear your thing with, like, he had Will Anderson this year. I get. I think the defense this year was one of the worst he's had in a, in a little bit probably. And I think that's not going to be the same going forward. Like, I think the defense is going to be much better. I think they need to – honestly, I think they need to get back a little bit of Bama football. Pound the rock. Like, yeah. I, listen, Bryce Young's a phenomenal t- – I'm, I'm a big believer in Bryce Young. I think he's great talent. I think he's going to be a good NFL quarterback. But I think they need more to get back to defense, like, physical Alabama football. I mean, that's what Georgia's done. And Georgia's taking that kind of taking okay. that from them. Here's his main problem now: when he uh, won two straight, and then fell out, and then Florida State won one, somebody else won one. When he fell off a couple of years, and he in 15 he came back and won one. Georgia didn't exist. There was nobody else in his in his sphere to challenge him. Now he the top of the mountain that he used to sit and look down from. Kirby Smart's sitting there now. No, he is 100. percent So now he has to he has to go through somebody. Like he's never really had to go through anybody. LSU would peak every now and then, give him some problems, but they would always go back. Yep. Georgia is not only peaking; they're peaking high above everybody. And I, this is I don't know, I don't know if he has three to five more years. I, he's starting over at quarterback. He's starting over at coordinator. He's starting over at offensive coordinator. Like I don't know. I I we just assume because he is so great. He's got greatness ahead of him, but at some point he's going to win his last national title. 
The only thing is he's so great, but his team's also great too. Yeah. Like those also, players think, are amazing. Also, everything you've said, he's done all that many times. Yeah. yeah. Like think about how many coordinators he's had in and out, in and you out, said in and Kirby out. Smart, it never Mel Tucker. Uh, yeah. Not Mel Tucker, sorry. That was all the was quarterbacks. Under. Like Jeremy Pruitt. Jeremy Pruitt. He's really, he, like winning a na- he's really only like the only natural side he's won with this like prolific offense is the one he when they I mean, smoked us a couple of years Brian ago. Brian Dayball yeah. was his like, all the other ones they were more like physical yeah. they were more physical teams. It was like they just had Devontae Smith was just unstoppable. The receivers were incredible. Uh-huh. But even even they pounded the ball too. Like Najee was a monster. All right. Question four. Twenty one questions. True or false? Dabo Sweeney has won his last national mm. championship at Clemson. Mm. See, that I'm hedging a, towards that one's true. more thought provoking, isn't it? Uh huh. Because exactly what he just said is the opposite with Dabo. Because he mm. just said uh, Saban's won it with multiple coordinators. Yep. Dabo ain't never won a goddamn thing without Brent Venables. Correct. Um, and he's not won a damn thing without elite, elite offensive talent. When he had Deshaun and Trevor, okay. Yep. But now he's doing it with the Cade Clubnecks and the Will Shipleys. And God bless Will Shipley. He's fine running back. He ain't what they've had in the past. The receivers are nowhere near – the five-star first-rounders they've had in the past. Like, he's trying to do it with top 20 talent, and I don't know if he can do it. I say I say Dabo Sweeney has, in fact, won. I say true to both of them. I say I think Nick Saban might have won his last at Alabama, and I think Dabo Sweeney might have won his last at Georgia. Yeah, I'll, right, say, Clemson, I'll, I'll, I'll say true to Dabo. Yep. I just think the ACC, it's hard to get back. It's going to be hard to like, build up like that again. Yep. He really had – I mean, and to his credit, though, let's say that was his last – he had a hell of a run. And beat Alabama twice. And he stared down Nick Saban twice. Yeah, and produced I mean, Deshaun's had his issues in the NFL, but yeah. two phenomenal quarterbacks. And then and how many Taj receivers? Boyd before yeah, I mean defensive players. I mean all yeah. over the place. Yeah. Um question number five. They're not dead though. No, they're, they're not, not dead. dead. They're not yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a huge year for them. Huge year, yep. Huge year. Like if they go nine and three, ten and two this year, they might be dead as far as yeah. national title contender. Yeah. All right. Question number five. Give me the percent chance Caleb Williams is our first repeat Heisman winner since 1974, 1975. 40%? 40. Now, I think it might be a little higher in this case. I don't know that he's peaked as a player. I think USC hasn't peaked as a team because they were so. He's in year two with Lincoln Riley. Lincoln, Lincoln, or actually, it's three. What year, am I saying? Year two at USC. Um,. Not exactly a conference that's going to knock your dick in the dirt as far as as far as defense, and there's nobody really like, like when Bryce Young won it. He came back. C.J. Stroud was still at Ohio State. You still have these other. I don't know that Caleb Williams is going to have as deep a contender pool around him, uh, at least coming into the season. As uh, because if you're thinking about it right now, I mean, geez, Joe Milton's probably like nine to one to win it. Like, well, so obviously, uh, you know, Jordan Travis I think is on some boards. Yeah. Drake May is on some boards. Yeah, high for sure. Boards. Uh, Caleb Williams. Then in his own conference, you got you know at little Sam Hartman's probably Sam high Hartman's going to be up there. Michael Penix, Jane and Daniels. I even because I think LSU is going to be good. Daniels yeah. is is one. Uh, but yeah, I, these are not. I don't think this is as strong a contender field as Bryce Young was facing coming into no, his second no, year, no. or Tebow faced in his second year, or you know but Lamar Jackson faced in his second year. Forty percent's two to one. That's that, those are pretty like that's what he probably is right now. Or is he closer to even odds? Yeah, I don't know. I, I I just percent chance. I I mean, in my head, I was saying I was going to say twenty, thinking that was a big number, just because it has only been done once. Yeah, it was fifty years ago. But I mean, yeah, probably like twenty five at least. It, it, I mean, it's, there's just guys that come out you never know. Like even not even but like Ohio State's quarterback. If he's any decent news, he's a chance. Any of these yep. Alabama's quarterback. Like if he's any. I mean, think good, about like, Joe Burrow. We had, million. You're yeah. right. Like these guys are like we'll see what happens. But Georgia's uh, quarterback. Uh, yeah, Georgia's yeah. if he's any good. But I mean. He's, I mean, he's clear, like clear favorite. I mean, no one close to start the season. Question six of 21. That's the game, 21 questions. Who would you bet on to find success in the Southeastern Conference first, Texas or Oklahoma? Um, geez, Oklahoma's season this year was such a step back that it yeah. almost – Six and seven. And I also feel kind of as if – Texas is built better for the SEC. But maybe that's athlete me wise? just – Yeah, athlete-wise and also just 
culture wise. I don't know why. Oh, they also have a guy we didn't just mention that. I mean, I could see Quinn Ewers being a factor in the Heisman race too. Also, Arch doesn't even have to be that good to win a Heisman. They'll just give it to him. This is a tough question. He'd be the first Manning, though. That's true. None of them yeah. have ever won the damn thing. Oklahoma or Texas? I think it's Texas because Texas already has quarterback figured out. Quinn Ewers can start this year. See, you're going to the NFL. Then I got four years of Arch. Like, I, I know that I've got a solid quarterback. Past uh, – and I know they signed five-star Jackson that, Arnold, but past Dylan Gabriel, I, I don't have any – People are really high on Arnold. That's fine. But I don't have – there's no guarantees. Like, Dylan Gabriel certainly isn't any great shakes this year. I think Quinn Ewers can be good this year. I'm just very curious to see how Venables approaches the year, too, because I think he pridefully with the with the transfer portal made some huge mistakes. And I'm curious to see how he tries to correct those. But no, I would I have to say Texas right now. But I don't want to quit. I believe Venables is a coach, but I just think it was weird just kind of how he didn't want the transfers, even though he was getting picked apart. And Can I ask a question? They were just hor- horrendous, yeah. Is Jack on spinning back fist with you? He is. Does he uh, often get up and go pee in that show? Um, I don't think so. He goes no. to pee a lot in this show. No, I don't think so. He's never. a frequent peer. No. No. Uh, not that I can recall. Yeah, Jack's a dainty little thing. Mm. We have to change <laughs> his diaper every now and then. Yeah. Question number... Seven out of 21. That means we're a third of the way there. Over the next 10 years, which team that's currently entering the Big 12 would you bet to have the best 10-year stretch? UCF, Cincinnati, Houston, or BYU? Hmm. You can make you can take a flyer on the next 10 years on one of the teams entering the Big 12. I have an answer. I would, I'll give mine first if you'd like. Go ahead. I take the University of Houston. Hmm. I think Houston has done a lot of great things with a lot of disadvantages in front of their face over the last over the last 10, 20, 30 years. Houston's always been pretty good. They've always had athletes. They've always had quarterbacks. Always. Back to David Klingler and Andre Ware and uh, Kevin Cobb and Case Keenum. They constantly have quarterbacks. They constantly have athletes. But they've been doing it kind of on a shoestring budget compared to Big 12 teams. They've been doing it, even though they share a state with five, six Big 12 teams, a lot of Big 12 teams, they've been doing it even though they're hamstrung. Now that they don't have that disadvantage, now that they're on a level playing field with TCU and Baylor and Texas Tech, what's stopping Houston? They're in uh, one of the top five metro areas in the entire country. You can probably – there's several cities in this country you can build a contender without leaving that city's metro area. You can do it in Atlanta. I think you might be able to do it in Houston. You can do it in L.A. And Houston is one of those that's going to have a shit ton of talent right there. I think Houston is probably the best fit for growing and dominating in the Big 12 in the next 10 years. Now you sold that strongly. I mean, I mean, it makes a ton of sense. I mean, I guess if you wanted to say what the best like infrastructure right this second, you could argue with them or maybe Cincy. Obviously, they just lost Fickle. But then I guess just to, I probably agree with you just based on everything you said. But um, I think you kind of make a similar a similar argument maybe with UCF. Just not that Big Twelve is more like in the central central time zone like that. Yeah. But Florida at least like UCF is like you're that Florida is such a hotbed. Yeah. That they're like always one class away. Yeah. And they've recruited well there in the past. Like they've done a good job finding the diamonds in the rough there. So. I'll make the argument for UCF as well, but I'd probably agree, Houston. Well, I mean, uh, UCF also, if you go back 20 years, you're talking about quarterback, 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 quarterback. That's what they've done a good job athlete, finding athlete, athletes, athlete, too. Yeah. Like, they've done it. Uh, I just trust Houston the trenches a little bit more probably. But. Jack, two things. Number one is Big Evans on spinning back fist, and he says you never leave the room to pee on that show. That, that is true, but it's probably because that's er- we usually do it early in the morning. That's true. And I, do- I have not drank as much water. You're an afternoon peer. And – I'm battling a cold, as you could tell, and I was drinking a Revitalite earlier. Um, and I think oh, it that just Revitalite, hit me. yeah, it, it really hit me. It goes through you. But that is that is true. Uh, by the way, if you're an MMA fan, check out Spinning Backfist with Big Evan and I with Robbie. And uh, the question was that he just answered, and I just answered. Over the next ten years, who has the best future? The ten year future, best ten year future for the four teams entering the Big Twelve: UCF, Cincy, Houston, or BYU. Who would you choose? To be the next 10 years. Wow, that's a really good question. Thank you. I've been told I'm gonna that go I write UCF. questions very well. You're going to go, go with UCF, with UCF too. UCF. I went with Houston. Uh, I think Houston actually is a good – I would go 
um, UCF, Houston, Cincinnati, BYU. You put Cincinnati over BYU because BYU has succeeded without a conference for so long. Actually, maybe BYU, Cincinnati. Like, Cincy. But I think all I, I four think can I think win. When I, I think when I think of BYU, I, just, I, I thought about BYU, and I just thought more like, I just don't know how they're going to fit. Like, uh, I don't know, just – I just think when I think about BYU, I just don't – with, with those teams, I don't know. There's a weird, like, mental gap there. Question eight. Who is the most under-talked about player in college football, and why is it Grayson McCall at Coastal Carolina? I mean, not not in my neighborhood. I, I found him. I know you're a big – you didn't find him. I found – How'd you find I, him? At Barstool Sports, I found him. You found Grayson McCall? Go back to – probably the, the first actually, guy. You actually go back to the – you were probably the first college football show you were ever on. Week one, my lock, his first start ever. Before he even started. He played Kansas. They were catching like six and a half, seven. They smoked him. They won by by like 15. And I I watched that game and I was like, this kid, Grayson McCall, is unbelievable. I love to pull up my tweets from that that game. I I watched. I was like, this kid is something else. He's my favorite quarterback in college football since then. With this portal going. Besides my Ohio State guys, obviously. With this portal going wild the way it's gone. And you see a guy like him thrive at a place like Coastal. And you naturally think, all right, well, where's he going? Where, 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 when's he going to take his shot? Sam Hartman's taking his shot at Notre Dame. Devin Leary's taking his shot at Kentucky. Well, when's and and he's going back to Coastal Carolina. He's he gonna, turned down Auburn, and he's going to finish the drill. It looks like so. He, he was Auburn wanted him bad. He said no. He decided to stay. Uh, well, he probably. I think he didn't he have the grades to get in. What? You don't think so, really? Well, I think there was a situation with his transcript. It may not have been grades. It was just he couldn't get in or something. They don't actually have classes at Coastal Carolina. I, well, it's just a front. I don't know. It's pretty easy. Yeah. (laughs) I would say it was much more difficult. I'll say that. Um, Question number nine. Will Penn State make the leap into being a national title contender along with Ohio State and Michigan in 2023? I think yes. They'll probably be in the same spot they're usually in, number three. I, I I think they could challenge for that number one spot in the Big Ten. They have some great young talent on offense. Really, really good. And if that quarterback is good, look the fuck out. Fair. Like, I... I love the running back. I forget his name, number 10. Singleton and um, – Yeah, Singleton. Braylon He's great. Allen. Not Braylon. Or they got a couple of guys that are really K- good. Katron Allen, I think it is. Uh, they had some, some, some no, young receivers, too. So. Katron Allen was – there was two freshmen. It was Singleton. It was a Katron Allen? Check yeah, Katron Allen. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Katron Allen and Singleton. Yeah, 13, yes. 10 and 13. Yeah, they'll come up again in a little bit in another question. But I, I, I think – and they're going to host – they'll have the reverse of what they had last year. They'll host Michigan. And be at Ohio State. And they'll be at Ohio State. Yep. And um, Michigan, on paper right now, to me, is the better team out of Ohio State and Michigan. Right now, I don't know who the quarterback's going to no, be. That's fair. Um, so, I, I think, could they knock off Michigan at home? Yeah. And if they do that, look out. I, I, I think the defensive talent's been very good. I think the running back talent's outstanding. They've actually had some quiet, excellent receivers there in the last really, five really years. Good. Lost like 10 years. That was really good yeah. ones. Uh, they've, been out, they've been a really good receiver-producing school, and if you can keep that up. They just got a great matching player, Quintez Cephas. Yeah, from uh, from Toledo. Oh, they got Kent Cephas. State. Or, oh, Kent State, you're right. Kent, Kent, State. Kent State. I think he's gonna. he could be a huge factor. Um, it will be very interesting. I'm high on Penn State, but it's, at the end of the day, I still think Ohio State and Michigan are better. I, I, I think I'd put those three. at the, I wouldn't say it's a big two. I'd say it's a big three this year. And, and I'm taking a leap because they haven't been with them uh, recently. Oh, so if Devin Brown wins the a quarterback job, people are going to be really mad. Have you seen that? Jack, I thought might have seen this. He's wearing number 33. Yeah. Quarterback? Yeah. So if he uh, wins the job, we'll have a quarterback wearing number 33. You know 33. why? It's because the first quarterback first quarter, at, yeah. uh, at like Ohio State. Oh, I forget what his name is. He, he wore, wore 33. He, he wore number 33, so he's just, he's just wearing 33. All right. Question. I will say it's a great branding. <laughs> Everyone will know who he is. Yeah. They yeah. they say he's from Utah. They say he's, that's like a very on brand from him. He's just like kind of unique character. Yeah. Did you see who he looks up to? Who? It, he, he said he idolized one quarterback growing up. Tate Martell. <laughs> no, no. No, I yeah. swear to God. That's, he said with this. Yeah, no. That's not, I, I tweeted out the Tate clip. Tate Martell. It's, it's hero, Tate. He said, I went to his camps. Uh, it makes sense. Utah. He was from yeah, Nevada. He's from that area, yeah. It's like saying my barstool hero is Marty Mush. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, you you got to give Marty some more. It'd be like Mantis. That, 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 that it's Mantis. Yeah, that'd be like more... saying you're Chris Spag. I, yeah. I swear <laughs> to God, Mantis was the first one in my mind. I was like, ah, oh, he doesn't work here. Don't don't pile on him. Marty could take it. Well, that's it. the point. Tim, I told he don't work anywhere. That's <laughs> true. Um, <laughs> number 10, not really a question. It's more of an activity. Okay. I, I'm going to list my top five quarterbacks for 2023. Okay. And then I'm going to ask a question on top of it. Okay. Yeah. 
My number five quarterback in the country for 2023, Sam Hartman in Notre Dame. Going from Wake Forest to Notre Dame, things are going to be great. Number four, Jordan Travis. Yep. Starting quarterback, Florida State. Number three, Michael Penix Jr., yep. Washington. Number two, Drake May, North Carolina. Yep. Number one, Caleb Williams, defending Heisman Trophy winner from USC. My question is, did y'all notice anything interesting about that list? I did one thing. What? That Lear wasn't on it. That was what stuck out to me. Did yeah. you just know ICC quarterbacks? No Big Ten or SEC quarterbacks in that top five. And I don't know that you can make a very compelling argument for any of them. Who would you argue from the SEC? Leary? Um, Joe Milton? No, you can't. You don't have a body of work. Even though I think they could be there. KJ Jefferson? They could be there. KJ Jefferson? Leary's the only one I would argue you could be Will there Rogers? now. You could like, say Jaden. Uh, J- Who's the best quarterback in the SEC right now? Is it Jaden Probably Daniels? LSU. Probably, yeah. But Which I, he's, is so, like, he's so up and down that, that I, I don't – I think the best quarterback in the SEC for 2023 – is we don't know yet. I, I think it's going to be either Alabama's guy, Georgia's guy. Maybe Will Rogers takes to a great new offense. Maybe KJ Jefferson takes to a new offense. I, but as of right now, it's undetermined. I I would not make a prediction who's the first team All SEC quarterback at the end of 2023. That Wouldn't would be it. like it's the they would Big all... Ten's the same way. JJ yeah, McCarthy I mean... will be preseason number one. But JJ, let's be honest, JJ McCarthy ain't that good. You know who may be the best quarterback in the Big Ten. Ohio State's quarterback. Well, yes, the, that's probably who it's going to be. And maybe be Tanner Mordecai, it, at Wisconsin. It could be Tanner Mordecai. I don't think it's going to be. I I I agree with you. McCord or Devin Brown is going to put up video game numbers. It doesn't matter because they're both talented and they're both about to go into an offense with amazing wide receivers yeah. and they'll be fine. But Mordecai's going to be good. JJ McCarthy's going to be good. And then obviously there's the question mark. Uh, the best quarterback, at least from a talent perspective, we've seen at Penn State, mm-hmm. I think, ever. Drew Aller, yeah. Um, who's going to be Ohio State's uh, star player that uh, basically opts out this year and doesn't play? You mean the one that gets hurt, really, unfortunately? Oh, um, so who's the third wide receiver? What's his name? Uh, well, that's Fleming, isn't it? Uh, or, or is uh, he gone? Nah, Fle- Fleming will be third. Jaden Ballard, too, is really good. Ballard, I heard about. He's, he's the next like young one that's up and Yeah, coming. I heard Ballard. But we have two coming in this year. Um, oh, yeah, the two and, kids and, from and, Florida. Uh, Car- Car- Brandon Ennis and Carnell Tate, who one's, one's a Miami Heritage kid. One's Why a, do I know Carnell Tate? Is, it, is he the son of somebody? Or he's, it, one's an IMG kid. Oh, so one's a, it's IMG and Heritage, the two yeah, like, the, best it's in Florida. Tate and Ennis, they're both. I'm saying they're, they're Heartline's two next, two next protégés, big guys. All right, number 11. Next five years, would you rather be Florida, Florida State, or Miami? Florida State, without question. Yes. Now I know they're the better, t- the best team right now. But Norvell, yeah. you know, do you see a high ceiling there? I, I think he's hard to figure it out more than I, the one that I can trust with the other schools at least. Well, certainly Crystal Ball uh, had a disappointing first year. I just, I, I think Napier is terrible. Yeah, I'm, that's I, I'm not a believer in Napier. Crystal Ball, I don't hate as much, but I just think. I feel like they had talent this year, yeah, and they really stunk, and that, that to me is a problem. It's crazy to say, but I think you go Florida State, Miami, Florida. I, I, think I agree 100%. Although I, I, this is a gigantic year for telling that because if Miami takes a big step forward on Cristobal, the way he's capable of recruiting, I think he could get it going real quick. Florida's getting passed, man. I mean, Napier was a bad hire. I, I, I say it all the time. but They're, uh, They get they, mad at me for saying like, it. They, they grabbed fucking Graham Ertz. They Graham have, he stinks. Graham Mertz. You know who they do and, and have? Jack, Jack Miller from Ohio State. Who was horrible. Oh, Jack Miller stinks. He, he he felt he the reason he left was because he was the first one to get to actually commit. Yeah. McCord came. Stroud came, and his ass went way down the list immediately. He's not good. Not good at all. Now, I will say, Florida, they're almost like a NASCAR driver. They had a great engine, and then for whatever reason, they just keep getting passed. One yeah. by one by one by one. It, it's a, and it's not immediate. It's a slow fall. Now it's like, well, you know why? They're behind Tennessee. They, they Are they about to Mullen. be? Mullen well, they, was they, the they had dumbest a, thing they ever did. They had a driver who won three races in a row, and then he finished twelfth in a race, and they fired his ass. They said you can't crazy. drive the car anymore. That's it's crazy. Still, it's crazy. It's Kentucky. Who'd you rather be in the next five years? Kentucky or Florida? I say I because I Stoops I, is so Stoops is a very good. That's what I'm, that's the reason I say Kentucky because of Stoops. I'd rather have the team with Stoops, yeah, hundred percent. Right, yeah. Um, because Stoops is recruiting high level players at fucking Kentucky. 
And great off like, great offensive lines every year. Yep. Skill players that are getting drafted. Great running backs every high year. High in the draft. Yeah, Rodriguez is great. They've had Wendell Robinson. Who's the kid this year? Um, that was good. Um uh, who the, was their running back? William or what's his last well, name? Chris Rodriguez was the running back. They had another they had another good receiver this year, young that followed Wendell Robinson. That was very good too. Well, they had a couple. Key was one and like, then like, uh Key is who I was thinking of. Yeah. They, but they have like they have guys. Uh all right. Question number twelve. Is the Big Ten West capable of producing a perennial power to rival the powers in the Big Ten East? They have their best chance right now. Why? With Fickle at Wisconsin. Yeah. You think Fickle's their, uh, you think Wisconsin's their best hope? I think that's going to be the best chance they're having, like they're going to have in like recent memory. Yeah. Do, I think would he's, you say I think that he's about a great role. I'm, I just think Wisconsin's closer, and I, and, yep. I, and I think Fickle's a better coach. I'm higher. Okay. What I'm, Fickle did at Cincinnati is like it's unbelievable. But yeah. we did see, like, Brian Kelly did the same thing. But look at Brian Kelly for sure, now. For sure, he's great. I think Brian Kelly's a great coach. But Cincinnati's not like uh, this desolate team in the middle of nowhere that, no. you know, like Ohio's a great state for producing talent. And Cincinnati ad- invests into their athletic programs, and credit to them. I mean, they're om- also a, a historic program. But there's also being good at Cincinnati, like uh, Kelly was, and going to the fucking playoffs. There's, there's like hanging with Bama. I mean, Cincinnati was close a few years with Kelly. Like they, yeah. they, they went to Sugar Bowls. They had, they were uh, one they away Gil- from Gilliard. The receiver, yeah. Marty Gilliard. I think they would have made it one year if there was a fourteen playoff. Now, I'm not taking. Also, we're comparing it, Brian Kelly, or we're comparing Fickle to Brian Kelly, who's now the coach at LSU. It's like well, that's what's crazy about that is you got Fickle that did it, you got Brian Kelly that did it, and in the middle you just got Butch Jones who did it. And he's terrible. And then Tommy <laughs> Tommy Tumberville was there too. Tommy Tumberville, oh, yeah. who's what now a, the senator. What an incredible! Uh, yeah, they've had a cast of characters. <laughs> what an incredible string of coaches they've had. Um, number thirteen, Mel Tucker, Billy Napier, Brent Venables. Which coach? Which coach Brent. lasts the longest at his current school? Brent Venables. You sure? Because he's got yeah. the highest state school, like. These other team, these other coaches win nine next year. They're gods. He wins nine. He's still in the hot seat. I'm. I, I see what you're saying. Especially if Michigan State wins nine next year, they'll act like they won fourteen and zero. Yeah. But Brent Venables, I guess I'm betting more in Kentucky as or pff, Oklahoma as a whole. Yeah. Because if you just look at history, Oklahoma is, even, is, is just they, they figure it. They figure it out every time and. He's bringing in good guys, and maybe this year was a true restart. And, yeah, you can point at TCU. But this is a big year to decide it, though. You are right. Michigan State will be okay with mediocrity a little bit more than – than uh, Certainly accepted more than Oklahoma does. Yes. Although, uh, from Oklahoma fans online, I was shocked how accepting of mediocrity they were. Yeah, they but will, they will fight you if you say Brent flip, Venables was not a good they'll coach. They'll flip this year if they go if it happens again. They will fight if you say Brent Venables was disappointing his first year. Oh yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know ball. We lost all of our transfers. Yeah, you still had the ninth most talented I roster in America. I know. I know. I'm you, with you there. Um, what? Well, I think he was yawning. Oh, that was a yawn. I thought it he was, was like. <laughs> no, I, he, think was I thought he had like an issue with I, something I, you said. I was like, I was, like, oh, I was on Mike Tyson's punch out. I almost punched him in the stomach. But I, but I would say Michigan State just due to the. Uh, that they he go six and six next two years he probably wouldn't get fired. Yeah, although Tucker, Mel Tucker, if he were to like go five and seven, five and seven, something like that, the the whole Tuck coming has to be embarrassing in retrospect. Well, it's right? not happening anymore. Yeah, he didn't come anywhere this they're year. Not, they're not they're not doing Tuck coming on Twitter. It's year? it's over. Wow, they bailed quickly. Well, they're they haven't given up on Tuck. I'll give them credit for that. But they've given up on Tuck coming. Yeah, and if I mean, this, I mean you, can't, you can't be flexing muscles when you're just yeah. bad. They were bad. Um, that was the Indiana. Question yeah, 14. Brutal. They were bad this year, really bad. For the first time at Arkansas, Sam Pittman will be without Kendall Bryles as offensive coordinator yep. and Barry Odom as defensive coordinator. Hmm. I think it could be a disaster. How much coming. worse will he be without his two coordinators? I think we, we could see a disaster in coming. I hope so. I think we could see. I, I hope I, so. I, I'd like to sit here and believe in fat leadership. I'm going to continue to do that. You're believing I'm, in the fat guy. I'm going to stand by Sam Pittman. He hired good coordinators before. I don't see why he can't again. Fat guys unite. That They can be leaders, Brandon. They yeah. can be. <laughs> um, here's the thing. Dan Enos is his new offensive coordinator. Uh, he had been at Arkansas before. He has a history of being pretty good. Um, and I think he could be good again. KJ Jefferson's a, a fine quarterback now. They don't have the receiver talent that they've had in the past with Traylon Burks, but they're running back. Rocket uh, – Rocket, uh, Saunders? Rocket Sanders. Yeah, Sanders. Sanders. Uh, he's very, very, very good. 
But defensively, he hired basically a no name. He, he he did not hire. He did not go out and get a Dan Enos. He hired a no name, and I feel like they could be really really bad. We'll see. But if you stand still in the SEC or you don't get your coordinators right in the SEC West, you'll get embarrassed in a quick hurry. I mean, yes. ever, they, everyone was once a no name until they weren't Brandon. That's true. Sam Pittman was a no name when he got hired. Bill Belichick was a no name. I think by the time he got hired with the Patriots, he was not a no name. No, he, for sure. But there was a point in time he was a no name. I guess Nick Saban at one point was a no name. Everyone, that's the. Brandon Walker was a no-name at one point. Absolutely. There you go. That wasn't the example you wanted to make, was it? For sure not. <laughs> it didn't quite there – was, there, was there was an outlier there. Yeah. But <laughs> Sam, and, yeah, I think they'll be all right. You just believe in fat guys. I just think they're going to be all right. I, I mean, he's, he's done a good job there. You don't want to give him any credit, but he's done a good job. I don't think he's done a great job. I didn't say great. I said good. <laughs> he did say good. I wouldn't say great. Yeah, I wouldn't, great would be a stretch for yeah. sure. I, I thought they were, they were very average last year. Um – Number 15, Next, the next group of five school you see with the best chance of getting into a Power Five conference. Uh, well, I mean. There's just so many. I mean, well, I mean, I, mean you, I, don't want, I don't want to say it, but, I mean, it is UConn. UConn? You think UConn? <laughs> no. The San AC- Diego State's talking to Pac-12 right now. Oh, okay, that's fair. You're right. You think UConn's getting into the- Well, UConn's talking to the ACC right now. I was going to say, like, Boise. Aren't they talking to Pac-12 too? I think everybody's talking. To, I think Pac-12 is just talking to everybody that will listen. I think San Diego State and Fresno State are very close. We don't close. talk about it enough, but is Colorado and Utah, are they going to the Big 12 soon? I think. Pac-12 is in trouble. I think the Pac-12, we may be sitting here, if we do this next year, two years, Pac-12 ain't a thing. I it, Like, it's it's disintegrating. You've already lost your 210 polls. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, if Utah and, and Colorado wise up and they're like, well, so what why are we going out west to play when we can just play, you know? What are Washington and Oregon doing? That's just that Oregon's, Oregon probably come to us to, like, Big Ten. Yeah, if if, if Oregon bolts, the whole thing's going to fall apart. And and then you're just going to have a, you know, the Pac-12, the Big 12 is going to go out and probably after they get Colorado and Utah, they'll also go get the Arizona schools. They should just blow everything up and just redo this. All the conferences? Yep. No, no, I disagree. No, blow because, it all up. No, because as we do it, do I, a four a, like. As a fan of a team in a small state or with a with, nah, a lot of, with, yeah. a, with a, the poorest state in the union, the fact that they, we were a founding member of the SEC and will never get left behind by the SEC is the greatest piece of charity that's ever happened. But the Southern <laughs> Conference, yeah, uh, in my four regions, you're yeah. still you're still king. Yeah, SEC it, stays. It would be. It, it, you've seen the graphic of like the since 1997. These are the these, these are where the national champs come from. Yeah. There's one little dot at Ohio State, and then the rest is it's just a circle. Yeah. Uh, from from Baton Rouge up to South Carolina, which has Clemson, Florida State's in the circle. Like every every national champion comes from this circle. It's amazing. What well, and then just the one blip from USC. Yeah, yeah. I guess there's a couple of small blips, yeah, but um, and maybe but yeah, it's, maybe it's not even that far. Maybe it's, just it's like literally the middle end. I think just the one USC. That's it. Um, let's see. Uh, all right, you're about to watch a college football broadcast right now. You can build it how you want to take it in. Give me your dream play-by-play announcer, color commentator, sideline reporter. I know you're a Big Ten guy, so I know Beth Moens is your play-by-play. <laughs> but after that, think about it. I think I've asked this before, but uh, this is always a good All question. All right, play-by-play, Vern Longquist. Vern, Uncle Vern. Yes. Caller, I'm going to just go with uh, Herb Street. Yeah, I mean, he's great at it. And then sideline, yeah. I like Molly McGrath. Molly or, McGrath. Yeah, Molly McGrath, yeah. very. She takes it. Uh, she... Keeps it very simple. Um, she's never the star of the show. Perfect. I'm going to go um, – Sean McDonough does not get the flowers he deserves. Oh, yeah, I like that. I love uh, – and he has trouble with the snap. I love Sean McDonough. I think he's fantastic. To my knowledge, he's never done an SEC game, or at least an important one that involved my team. He's probably done some. Um, McDonough's up there. Brad Nessler, it, it hurts to leave him to the side. I like McDonough. And, yeah, Herb Street's just the color guy. I mean, he's – Terrific at what he does. Um, and then I'm going to go old school on the sideline reporter. This was when I was in college, and she didn't do it long, but Jill Arrington, if anybody remembers that name, Jill Arrington from CBS. She was uh, – I'm going to have to look her up. She was, she was, very, she was very good, very talented. I enjoyed, enjoyed watching her on TV. You big F? Uh, I mean, I would probably agree. Herb Street's great. I have to have Herb Street in there. Um, 
play-by-play. Probably, honestly, I know you guys are going to feel this about this one. I've always been a big fan of his. I think he's got the big game voice. I like Tess's tour. Oh, I like Tess. I like Tess's tour yeah. a lot. I, I just like his voice. I don't know if yeah. maybe it's a Northeast thing. But I like Tess. I just think he's got a big game voice. I like he he kind of he brings the heat when like when you need it. He you gets like a him better as a, a football or a boxing announcer? <sighs> um, because he calls. I do big, like him boxing. Yeah. He's got that. He's got the boxing voice as well. But yeah, I like him. I'll go. I'll go Tess's tour. I do like Vern a lot as well. That was a good pick. I like um, Vern was like sideline. Hmm. Can I go like anywhere, like ever? Do whatever you want. It'd be e- you if even, you want. Even if he didn't do college, do whatever you want. He just died. The goose. The goose. Oh, R.I.P. He's he's my goat. So I reported like any sport. Goose would have been great if I gave him a chance at college. I bet he, in the NFL he was my favorite. Like growing up, I love the goose. R.I.P. Tony Siragusa. Love the goose. Uh, question seventeen. Where did he go to college? Maryland. I think. So. Uh, he's he's a Jersey guy. Pittsburgh? I, I don't know. Because I know he's an undrafted guy. Not Villanova or something? Not something crazy? That's where his son went, actually. Oh. I uh, knew Syracuse and Villanova made sense in some, some fashion. Where did he go to college? Um, I'm about to get it. Okay. Where did he go? Pitt. Pitt. See, I nailed it. All right. Question 17. Who has the best running back room in America in 2023? For examples, you got Corum and Donovan Edwards at Michigan. You have Singleton and eight K Tron Allen at uh, Penn State. You have Travion Henderson, uh, Mayan Williams at uh, Ohio State. Which how often do you go into year three of the same running back pair? And we have another guy too that's really good. Uh, and then there, I'm sure there are others across this great country of ours. I'm gonna uh, still roll with Michigan. You, you're gonna go Michigan, but I don't think the other ones are that far behind. It's I might go Penn State. I think those freshmen last year were fucking nuts. They're explosive as hell. They are. They <laughs> they, I are. think they're nuts. They, they, really, they seem really, like they they, they both showed out in that Utah game. They yeah. went nuts, and they both in the bowl game, and they both come on the field, and you're like, did they clone Saquon Barkley? They, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, but and also, there's something just spectacular about uh, a shorter r- guy running the ball for Penn State in that all white uniform. Yeah. Like it just, I don't know why, but it just, it's just it's a running back uniform. It it really is. It, it is a running back. It's a linebacker uniform too. Of course. But it's not like a quarterback uniform. Um it's it, that's that's an interesting theory right there. We've I, never Ohio State has a quarterback uniform. We've never talked about uniforms from that perspective. No. What 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 maybe it just doesn't a wide receiver uniform. I mean Ohio State kind of LSU? Although yeah. is that the uniform? It's, it now you're just talking about schools. Now you're talking about schools. Like, yeah. position, but I yeah. really think what he's talking about with the the white uniforms, and they, they get dirty, you know, for running backs. Something about like I can just envision, even Miles Sanders. Yeah. Uh, obviously Saquon. These two. I mean, it's just something about a five seven guy with well, quads the size of Florida. Let me tell you how you know. Uh, think of. Uh, Blake Corum, how good he is, right? Yeah. In your mind, put him in that Penn State uniform. In the all-whites, he looks fantastic. Yeah. yeah. He looks fantastic. Um, Donovan's a little bit bigger. I don't think he'd look great in Penn State. All right, question number 18. If we made a movie about Lincoln Riley leaving Oklahoma in the middle of the night, going to USC, which actor plays Lincoln Riley? Mm. All right. I'm not good with actors, but it's high time we get McConaughey in a football movie, right? Yeah, I was. My first thought was McConaughey, but Vince Vaughn, or is he too funny? I think he's too tall. Yeah, way too tall. Okay, I think Um, Um, you're so much better with actors than I am. McConaughey is always on the sidelines of Texas. It's time we get him in a football movie. I can see McConaughey playing Lincoln Riley, and and he's a Texas guy. And being a Texas guy, he could just really play up the scumbaggery yeah, of these pieces of shit. Yeah. Lincoln Riley's like a good enough looking guy that I feel like there's got to be an actor that's a little closer to him physically wise. Um, I'm not great with actors either. I've got to think there's got to be like a, like a white, handsome, 40 year old. Shit, I'll let Kyle Chandler play him. Kyle Chandler? Okay, all right. The guy that played the coach in Friday Night yeah, Lights coach the TV Taylor. show. Yeah, Coach Taylor. And all also, right. Lincoln Riley's not a handsome guy. I just want to point that out. That's not true. He's a fine-looking. That's, that's not a handsome guy. He's a fine-looking. He's a good-looking guy. He's a fine-looking individual. Like, like I'm not, not going to sit here and look in. 
Y'all, y'all drop your 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 standards for handsome when we talk college football coaches. The fact that Casey will sit here and tell me the Lane no, Kiffin you is know hot. why I drop my standards when I talk about other guys is because I hope if that guy's uh, good looking, then maybe I can be uh, yeah, not uh, Kingsbury. He's hot. He's good looking. Kingsbury's he's a handsome yeah. fellow for yeah. sure. I, what, what do you think? Do you think Lane Kiffin's hot? No. Um, hot, strong. <laughs> I'd say I say like he, he's probably I, he's like decent looking. Yeah, handsome. I mean he's rich. Well, yeah. That's I mean, hot. All right. Uh, you saw his no, new girlfriend? It finally became public. I was telling you about that girlfriend three months ago. You, I had the scoop on you that. You showed me pictures of her uh, before <laughs> the season started. Number 19, is Florida State a national championship contender in 2023? Uh, I don't know if they have the guys yet. I they got guys, though. They, they transfer portal the hell out of them. And they're bringing, what's his name, back? Uh, the defensive end? Verse? He's That's good. That's crazy. From Albany. Yeah, yeah. stud. Uh, crazy how Jordan some Travis guy. back. Yep. They got a great running back. As much as we want them to be, I think they're going to be like is Johnny just, Wilson just back? below that. I don't know if Johnny Wilson's back. He must be because I haven't seen his name in NFL draft Twitter. That guy's the definition of an NFL For draft sure he's Twitter. Six, like seven. Six. I've never seen a player jump off the screen like Johnny. He has Wilson. to come back. That Friday night game against yep. Louisville this Man, year was crazy. I thought he was the greatest wide receiver crazy. ever. <laughs> you look at him, he's six seven. He's running like a deer. I was like, why isn't this guy catching twenty five hundred yards? Like he, he the, the year before at Arizona State, he had twelve catches. It doesn't matter. Like what were they? doing with him yeah you look at him like this is what uh that's why herm edwards got fired like if you're going into a, that guy you didn't know what to do with him if you're going into a movie studio and you're saying all right we're gonna cast a receiver what do receivers look like look up get him in this right here that's what it looks he's like. receiver one x get over <laughs> here um i think yeah he's coming back Florida state a uh, title contender he's coming back he spurned the nfl hmm Spurned is a good word. I feel it like was the I didn't. We only use I feel like when talking about like I feel that. Like they're going to be the team that you like want to be, and on paper it feels like they can be, and yeah. they're going to fall like just short. I feel the same about the team. I'm going to ask about at number twenty. Can LSU really be a national title contender with Brian Kelly in in, in 2023? I think they can. Yeah, I, I do. If I think you have to say yes to both or no to both. No, no, no. I think they're very similar teams. Very, they're quarterback driven. LSU has more talent. For sure. Florida State beat them. I yeah. know. I thought it was yeah. first Did they game. play again this year? They do, right? That'd be awesome if they did. I, I think they so. do. I think they opened. The, I'll they, look that up. Uh, but they're very similar teams. And I don't know, man. I, I just I, – LSU was so up and down last year. Like you, They do play again this You year. remember the highs. You remember them beating Alabama. And you remember uh, Jaden Daniels running. Do you remember – I remember lo- the Tennessee game. Like, do you I remember, remember losing to Texas A&M? I the do. worst Texas A&M team in a decade? No, I do for sure. No, no I, doubt. Like, they lost to Texas A&M as 20-point favorites. If they get past that – oh, You say that. If they get past LSU – Are you talking about Florida State? Yeah. The only thing is, man, that sa- Saturday – we haven't, I haven't looked at any schedules, but Saturday, September 23rd, yeah. Florida State at Clemson could be a massive, massive game. That's early for that, too. Yeah. LSU 2023 schedule, uh, just, just to do theirs. So they open – with uh, Florida State Sunday, set, oh, what a great Sunday night game! This They're is doing be. it back in the uh, yeah in New Orleans, Nola. No, it's in Orlando. Oh, so they're doing it at the Cheez It Bowl. Yeah. Uh, then they have Grambling. Then they come to Mississippi State after they lose to Mississippi State, Arkansas at Ole Miss, uh, at Missouri, Auburn, Army at Alabama. So they got Florida State and at Alabama. They have to at least split they have to that. play Army in the middle of the, all this. They play Army, which is that'd be a great game to bet. Also there. Not to say they would ever lose this game, but you know how the SEC always has an easy baked-in opponent uh, the week Who's before. Who's UAB? There's this Georgia State, which is just mm-hmm. not the kind of tomato can you want to be playing between Florida and A and M. I don't know. This year they played UAB and, and crushed them, if I recall correctly. They did. They won by like forty. Because yeah. I had LSU minus, I think, like seventeen and a half or something. Last question, Big F. If you had the power to make one fan base in school disappear from college football right now, who would it be? Wow. You should have said not Michigan. I mean, it's easy. It's e- like Michigan. I'll, I'll go not, Outside of Michigan? I'll go not, I'll go not Michigan because that's the, uh, the easy answer. Um, I'll tell you over the couple of years that I've really came to hate, even though I don't really have like much of a reason to. They're, I just think they're like the worst fan base ever is – Notre Dame really stinks. Really, wow. I, Notre Dame fans are like they're awful. Yeah, and, wow. and you wanted to send from from a couple years ago. We did so many college football shows with them, and ever picked against them every time. They won every time. Yeah, 
and they are the worst. Yeah. The, the Chicago one specifically. Uh, I left that show being like, Notre Dame fans, like, I hope they all go to hell. Fuck these people. I Ironic. Remember, I remember being at that game, that Notre Dame Chicago, that Notre Dame was game in Chicago, and I was in the Notre Dame section. And I remember looking around thinking, this is kind of, they're kind of lame. As a they're fan very, fan. they're the worst. So they're they, la- they got some stupid chants and some stupid Their fan and- base is incredible. That's the best way. If you were to rank lamest fan bases in America, yeah. I think Notre Dame's up there. Arkansas is really close. No, they're not that. They're, they're just, dumb. Okay, maybe dumb fan bases, but Notre Dame's just like, I mean, they're goody two shoes. They're the they're yeah. the they're the uh, well, they're altar boys. Yeah. I, I mean, the best line I ever came up with this on the show was the average age of the Notre Dame fan base is, is dead. dead. Yeah, yeah, that's they're they're an old fan base. Yeah, and I just loved how they're officially like a stepping stone program. One hundred percent. That guy's going from there to LSU. This is guy, a big year, though. But Tommy Reese going from there to Bama, like they are yeah. a stepping stone program. They I are think not. The, they are never ever again a like final. They are not a final destination. They are. This is a they huge. They are a means to an end job. Yeah, this is a massive year. Forever. They've still been recruiting really well. I mean, they're not. They're not. A, but I also think it helps for your regionality for Ohio State for Notre Dame to be good. I yeah. think regionality as a whole helps. Uh, it it just brings more passion to it if you're not just alone up there you have like obviously you'll still be the top dog as you have been forever but with notre dame being good michigan wisconsin whatnot it's good for the regionality of college football um what about you one one fan base can disappear one school can disappear from college football tomorrow well i i i'm i hate providence right now they don't have a football team though i just hate them (laughs) Okay, but um, I'll just go. Titus is Titus records on Tuesdays. If you want to talk to him about college basketball, um, I'll just go with my easiest one. It's Michigan State. They deserve to be. It, it, they deserve. Uh, I can't make a joke right now, but they deserve to be wiped off the planet. Um, mine is. Uh, I'm just gonna be honest. It's Alabama. Uh, not only has the fan base embarrassed themselves with their Brandon Miller takes over the last. Uh, couple of weeks but really the biggest reason is if i if alabama disappeared from college football that opens up the college football world to everybody else they have dominated it to a point right, yeah. that they have just dominated the last 15 years so thoroughly that i would like to see them leave so that we can open it up and open up some new windows and get some fresh air in here georgia's s- georgia's been a new uh breath of fresh air i guess but they're going to get old very quick i i just want to you know get some new blood in college football looking right. at Travi every day and really knowing a true Alabama. Yeah. Grew up in Alabama. Yeah. Went to Alabama and Auburn games growing up and then ended up going to Alabama. Yeah. And then just being the douchebag Alabama fan has really shown me yeah. what you have had to deal with My since you life. were yeah. uh, a child. But even Travi's like a nice Alabama fan. Yeah, no, he's so a nice Travis guy. best case scenario. Yeah. Like that's, he's like the nicer, very nice Now, man. Now picture Travi, except he lives in Columbus, Mississippi, and he never went to Tuscaloosa. Never even been to Tuscaloosa. Eighty-two IQ. He has an eighty-two IQ. Uh, <laughs> you know, he he hangs out in the pa- parking lot of Walmart on the weekends. Uh, his best meal he's ever eaten in his life is a double cheeseburger from Sonic. That is, think about Travi in that body. That is half the population of the South, and they suck. They suck. And then when you have to go get your oil change i gotta look they at him. you how about that game on saturday time. i went to chick-fil-a in tuscaloosa one time and this was in tuscaloosa so that's fine all, all bets are off and uh and, and and the the girl she looked as nice as she could be my pleasure my pleasure and uh i ordered it and she brought me my food and i had mr state shirt and she said here you go roll tide and i was like shut up bitch i i just i can't i i just i hate everything about them i hate everything about they got to bring it into everything and I didn't say shut up, bitch, but I was like shut up, bitch, in my mind. I was like, shut up, bitch. But I didn't say it because I'm a nice person. What else? Anything else? You should have just said it. I'm going to go back. Go back. <laughs> I'm going to go back. To t- Give her a piece of your mind. <laughs> wonder what she's doing Hey, now. hey, where's that Roll Tide broad in here? Nine girls Look speak up. <laughs> you just give her, hey, bitch. <laughs> What's your confidence level of Ohio State like making the mock playoff that. this year? <laughs> confidence level of what? Ohio State making the playoff this year. I mean, hi. I mean, yeah. Every, like all these years, we keep. Ha- I mean, Fields was like a little bit outlier, but we've kind of every year had like a new quarterback, and yeah, things have worked out well. Like, I I know McCord's very talented. I mean, he played with uh, Marvin Harrison in college in high school. They're very good friends. He's been in the system for like three years. Yep. And I'm a true believer that if Devin Brown's able to beat him out, he must be incredibly talented. Yep. And I know he was like a five star guy, so I mean, 
I trust Day with the quarterback. Sui's going to a great job with him, so I, I'm not too worried about it. I think the defense is going gonna, is gonna to be better. A lot of young talent came back again. Like JT's back, Sawyer's back. Um, we're doing some things differently. I think we're gonna go, we're going more like um, more like a straight four down lineman this year, a little more of that type of set. I think that's gonna be better for a skill set wise. Do you care that uh, Rayola Lola? No, not really. Decommitted. Rayola, Rayola? no. Rayola. Dominic Rayola or no. no Dylan? I think Dylan Dominic was his dad. Because literally, like best. right when he re- we just got another kid from like from North Dakota. That I don't know if you watched him while he played in that uh, the Under Armour game. He was unbelievable. Okay. So I'm just I'm just not worried. Like we're growing quarterbacks in North Dakota now. We got Utah guys. We wherever they're good, Brandon. We find them anywhere. We we have a California. Wherever we we we'll go find Mississippians who can throw the. We, rock. I mean, JG Barrett's from Texas. I mean, Hassan's from Maryland. Strauss from, Strauss California. from California. We go wherever they are. No, we're gonna either 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 Pennsylvania or Utah this time around. All right. Well. Yeah, McCord. Yeah. This was boys talking ball. Just boys talking ball. That's all it is. Yeah, that was uh, really great. Yeah. Much better than. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, it was bad. It was real bad. My bad. I, I I'm I'm sorry. Big F. I had a great time, fellas. Pleasure, pleasure to have you. Always. Uh, Noah, anything else? I think we're good. Here. I think we're good here. All right, that is unnecessary roughness.